shit. You hear me talking? One of the bombest performers that I ever did see live, man. The bitch had to be up in her late 40s, even maybe in her 50s then. I think, I think she might have been a 50s then. Man, she put it down, man. Every song and one of the most memorable moments from that from that particular show, it was like a it was like a nigga in the crowd, like a big nigga. Man, this nigga just was sounding like Rick James from the audience and shit. And Tina Marie just invited that nigga up on the stage, man. And they just did fire and desire right there, like it was Rick James. It was one of them special moments, man. You get to see where when you see performance live at the House of Blues, Tina Marie. Rest in peace, Lady T, it was bomb. I wish, hey man, if you didn't get to see Tina Marie live, you missed some shit, nigga. Certified, spoken on by the ball, smack top, motherfucking soil. Tina Marie, rest in peace. You ain't gotta come back no more, baby. You ain't gotta come back no more, man. Oh man, I can just go through so many. Tina Marie joints, man, I, I think, um, I think that song Deja Vu touched me the most, man, Deja Vu touched me the most, that was good, man, Tina Marie rest in peace, alright, our next nigga in the motherfucking news, this nigga Exhibit, I know motherfuckers ain't heard, uh, heard about Exhibit in a long ass motherfucking time, man, you know, what was, what was that shit that, uh, uh, fix up your car? What was that? What they call that shit, uh, what? Pimp my ride. Pimp my ride. Yeah. Man, they talking about hey. exhibit, owing the government hey. like motherfucking a million hey. dollars. You owing the government a million hey. ticket exhibit. What the fuck you doing, man? You know what you're supposed to be paying your taxes over there, man. You know, Dr. Dre told you. Didn't Dr. Dre say something about niggas not paying them taxes on that 2001, one of them, one of them chronic album? It had to be. He said when niggas, when niggas not paying their taxes, I seen when niggas didn't pay their taxes. Exhibit, you wasn't listening to Dre when he said to pay your taxes, nigga. Exhibit, no. Floating over exhibit. I ain't, I mean, exhibit. I'm not like laughing at a nigga this morning. My thing is when niggas start touching big paper, when niggas start touching meal ticket paper, why don't niggas just save their fucking money instead of fucking it off? Nigga, you know this shit ain't gonna last forever. What? Okay, why do motherfuckers be changing their lifestyle? Like, a nigga could just be making, like, you know. Okay, first you was broke. At first you was broke. At first you was broke. Then you start having paper. Okay, why don't you just keep living like you broke? You know what I'm saying? Do, do you really be needing to going over to uh, going over to uh, Laurie's every night? Do you really need to be doing that type of shit? Do you really need to be having a, a, a two Range Rovers and one for your bitch? Do you really need to be having a house here and a house in in New Mexico somewhere? Do you really need to be having all that ice that you can't resell when the shit get old? When you when you got that ice in that exhibit logo, you. you you can't sell it when it's like that. All you can do is give it back to the pawn shop, homie. What? 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 What, what, what do niggas be doing with their money? What happened to the pimp my ride money? And I didn't like pimp my ride any motherfucking way. Exhibit broke as fuck, y'all. No disrespect. Next. Okay, fuck it. Chris Brown and Raz B. Chris Brown and Raz B. Okay. Raz B. 
Gay Rasby. Gay Rasby. Said some shit to Chris Brown like, y'all know what the fuck happened. On Twitter, say some shit like, how could you hit such a beautiful woman like Rihanna? And, and, and Chris Brown let that shit affect him some kind of way. And say some shit to this little gay motherfucker right here. You know, Raz B. You know what I mean? Now, I know Chris Brown is like, hey man, I can't let this little gay motherfucker say that shit. You know? And I feel like that too. You can't let, hey, you little gay motherfucker. But see, it's a difference when the ball smack say it and when Chris Brown say that shit on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Niggas should know better. Chris Brown, where your homies at? Chris Brown, where your homies at? Chris Brown, where your, where your good advice giving homies at? Huh? I mean, man. Niggas need to have somebody to stop them from doing stupid shit, man. You gotta have a, you gotta have a, a, a advisor, homies. Nigga, Chris Brown, if you hear me, you need an advisor, homie. You know, because you fucking up. You know, you, that was some unnecessary shit. But I felt you, though. I understand. Can't have this little gay motherfucker talking shit. Okay, now. The, the brother, the brother, R Rasby brother, R Ricky, Ricky Romance. Ricky Romance. Hey, man. Ricky Romance, I like how he jumped in the shit. And he like, uh, you know, he, he say if he see <laughs> he, he say if he see Chris Brown on the street, he gonna put a pistol in his mouth. You know what I'm saying? If Chris Brown need to just go knock on that nigga door, you know what I'm saying? To see, you know, just be like, nigga, what? Nigga, what's up, nigga? What kind of nigga get on a video and say what you gon' do and you know you ain't gon' never do it? Never do it! Fan man, these niggas be in some fantasy shit. But you know what, though? I'ma give Raz B some props for being able to, to get Chris Brown to respond, you know? I, I'ma give you some props, nigga. Cause you like, you like on some gay, you like a gay cat stack. You 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 like the gay. You and y'all the gay. You the gay cat stack. And and I, and I ain't disrespecting um, gay people either when I say that. Y'all know what the how the fuck I mean that shit. You understand me? I don't want no motherfucking negative motherfucking comments on my shit. You know. I'm, you know. I'm just saying. Ricky Romance and Raz. Rasby say he want a, uh, 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 a talk show. He want, uh, no, uh, a reality show. Yeah, Rasby and Chris motherfucking Brown, nigga. All right, y'all. Let's keep it moving, keep it going. Uh, we gonna get right into some motherfucking, oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Restaurant of the motherfucking week. Restaurant of the motherfucking week, y'all. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a keep it real. I'm a keep it real. I'm a, I'm a give out two restaurants, and and y'all gonna, you gotta feel me on these two, two spots. Now, this, for the first time, we gonna give out a spot in another state, you know, because I, I happen to go there and I happen to taste they food and be able to really be able to speak on it. And I know I, I, I got listeners out there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. C-O-A Mexican Fine Dining in Milwaukee, cold ass Wisconsin. Listen to me now. In the Bay Shore Center, man, I told them, I said, hey, man, y'all got some bomb at, they had some bomb ass enchiladas in that motherfucker, and I was in Wisconsin, nigga. Listen to me. Fuck with COA in Wisconsin, man. Real talk.
Now I don't want to be, you know. Let me show. Let me let me show some love to my Cali people, my motherfuckers around me. Let me tell you about a spot right here in Long Beach, kinda kinda close to Seal Beach. Let me tell you about Joe's Crab Shack over there, man. I know, I know, I know. That seemed like a regular little old spot. Ain't really popping. It ain't really vibing. But I, I got to speak on Joe's Crab Shack. I took my moms there, man. And, hey, they got some bomb-ass motherfucking seafood in Joe's Crab Shack, man. It's pretty cool sometimes to go and get one of them um, um, big old buckets of shit, you know what I'm saying, and sit down with crab legs and all that old that shit there, it's bomb, Joe's Crab Shack, y'all, it's COA in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, y'all, I was gonna go check out the best bratwurst spot out there in Milwaukee so I could speak on that, but I couldn't find that motherfucker, man. And I had GPS in my shit, man. That was some embarrassing motherfucking shit for a nigga like me to be driving around laws. Can't find a motherfucking spot in little old city like Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Anyway, you know how we do. We keep it going. Reader, listener, emails. Reader, listener, emails. And our first reader, listener, email. It comes from a, uh, a nigga from Norman, Oklahoma. You feel me? A nigga from Norman, Oklahoma writes the ball smack. He says, uh, ball smack, I need to know... How you feel about a bitch lying? About a bitch lying to you and you're catching her in a lie. How, how serious is that? How you do with that? What you do with that? Okay. Now, in reality, I feel any relationship involving you and a bitch is involving lying. Any relationship with you and a bitch is involving lying. You feel me? Now, the, the, the whole thing with that is, is the magnitude of the lie and the damage that the lie will cause if it comes to light. You feel me? You know, like, for example, let's say, a bitch is, you know, she's lying to you about an illness. She's really ill, and she don't want you to know about it. You know what I mean? She don't want to be seen as weak to you, so you don't you don't really hear about that. Say say you cool with a bitch, and then all of a sudden the bitch drop out of sight. You're like, what happened to that bitch? And then. You know, then she come back, and then she, she like, told you some bullshit, but then you found out that the bitch was sick. You feel me? See, the bitch was, was, was lying, but, you know, she just didn't want to make herself look, look weak. You feel me? Okay. But then there's the more serious lies. You know, the one that's like, I don't got a dude, but she got a dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, the story of the bitch that I know who had a nigga and then she fired the nigga, right? But the nigga had a key to her tilt. The nigga had a key to her tilt. So she fired a nigga, right? And, a, and, and the nigga had a key to her tilt. So then she got a new nigga. And she got the new nigga over at the house and didn't tell the new nigga about the old nigga. So then the old nigga comes back and kills everybody in the house. And that's a true story. You understand what I'm talking about? That's, that's a dangerous lie right there. The magnitude of the lie is what we talking about here. So... 
All relationships is involving lying. Little lies, medium lies, and big lies. The big lies. Oh boy, how big is that lie you caught her in? You know what I'm saying? You know, the magnitude of the lie. Our next reader listener email comes from a nigga from Philly. And he wants me to elaborate on an interview that I recently gave with the Brotherhood of the Game, if you never checked it out. The Brotherhood of the Game examined the ball smack top soil. And in that interview, I made a statement. I, I said something about niggas macking by accident. And he wants me to elaborate on what I meant by macking by accident. Okay. I'm going to try to summarize this real brief and try to make it get through there. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, macking by accident. It's like this. As you come up, as a nigga, you are naturally endowed with certain gifts, you know, as a youngster coming up, you know, you're probably very attractive looking, you look good, maybe you got a little bit of paper so you're able to, your family got paper so you're able to dress well, you're able to present yourself in a real nice way, you know what I'm saying, so you're attractive to bitches anyway. And you could call yourself a Mac. You could be like, I'm a Mac because bitches like me. But really, you are you are you are doing none of the things a Mac is supposed to do. You 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 have none of the rules and regulations in place. You're just you're just you're getting bitches just because. And that's fine and dandy. But that's what you call macking by accident. Because you're getting bitches just because. But when it comes to really applying the rules and regulations of macking, you can't because you don't know them. Because you never practice them. Because you're macking by accident. Macking by accident. Let me let me let me elaborate a little bit more. Let me see. Here we go. It's like this. Like Let's say you're a really attractive guy and you have a really nice car and you have a nice house, right? All those things, jewelry too. You even have some fame. And you're pulling all these bitches, you're pulling a lot of bitches. But since you're not practicing any of the rules of macking, you're macking by accident. And so, Once you get your bitches, you really don't know what to do to keep them because you're macking by accident. So you do shit like break all the rules of macking, like, you know, you fuck your bitches too much and you're putting pictures on pedestals and you, you don't know how to talk to the bitches in front of the other bitches or you just don't know what to do. So you end up losing bitches. You know, as fast as you get them. <clears throat> Macking by accident. Anyway. That's a little elaboration on it. A lot of people do things by accident. Like, people make hit records by accident. And then they can't repeat the process of the hit because they don't even really know how they made the hit because they made it by accident. Same thing with macking. Niggas do, niggas mac by accident. You know. It's a cold game. And then another thing about macking by accident is you can mac by accident all the way up until you get old. And then once you get old, you really can't get no bitches because you never knew what you was doing anyway. So now that you don't have the good looks on your side, it's 
more difficult for you to have bitches. Because, see, really, you don't have to be attractive to have bitches to be a Mac. You know, Macking is not a, like, a most handsome contest. See, that's, that's a thing that motherfuckers don't realize. See, having a lot of bitches don't really have n- a whole lot to do with how attractive a nigga is. A non-attractive nigga with a lot of game can have a lot of bitches and, and the bitches treat him like a king. You feel me? And then you can see a really attractive dude who who really have no control over the bitches he fuck with. He just like a gigolo to them. Or, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like that. Uh, like, like a good example of a gigolo nigga is that nigga the the fucking with Fantasia. You know what I'm saying? The, the guy Fantasia sued and shit with the, with the bitch. See, that nigga's like a gigolo. It, anyway, macking by accident. I'm getting all into like tangents and shit. But anyway, macking by accident. Oh, yeah. Another uh reader listening email um a young nigga a young dude from australia writes the ball smack and like a 16 year old dude now this is he hollered at me about this and i i really just wanted to elaborate on it because you know we got motherfuckers in australia fucking with the ball smack top so I'll shout out to y'all motherfuckers for fucking with me in Australia. Look, dude, 16 years old, want to know what can he do as a 16-year-old with regard to Mackin? What can he do? Now, real saliva, real spit, real talk. What can I say, man? 16 years old. It's been a long ass time since I've been 16. And with all this new shit out here, man, as a 16 years old trying to juggle some bitches, I think it's possible. I think you I think you could do it. I think you could juggle a bitch or two. I think you could. But, you know, I don't know shit about Australia and the dynamics how that shit is or whatever, but I imagine if it's similar to here, juggling more than one bitch at your high school is kind of rough. It's doable, but you're destined to get cracked, you know. Uh, Multiple bitches at different schools, you know, you could pull it off, you know, you could do it, you know, but hey, you know. Yeah, you you definitely want to do that. Different schools, you know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, do things to get money in your pocket, you know, uh, get to get as much paper in your pocket, get your wardrobe up. Um, I don't know what the driving thing is out there for driving, but if you was really driving, you could really do a lot of, oh man, you could do a lot if you're driving. If you're driving as a 16 year old motherfucker with a little bit of paper, nice wardrobe, you could do real good. If you can move around driving and shit. So that's what I say. Get all those things up if you can. Stay focused. Uh, don't fuck around with no niggas. Don't no sidekick homies and all that old shit, man. Just try to be macking for self. Don't be depending your macking on another nigga macking. Don't be acting. Just be in there and be really be macking. You feel me? Yeah. Ball smack top sword just trying to talk to you, man. I don't know how much game I can give a 16-year-old, but that's what I would do if I was you. You feel me? Yeah. I got another uh, reader listener email that go like this. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. Now, this is a bitch from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And she kicked it to me just like this. She said, Boss Mac, my cousin is a weenie ass 
nigga, and I need some motherfucking help. I want you to help me steer him in the right direction. What can you do to help a bitch out, ball smack? Listen. He fucking with my homegirl, and my home, I, my girl got way more game than him. I didn't even know he was fucking with her until he was fucking with her, and then he living with her, and the bitch is just a little bit more slick than him, ball smack. The other day, I, I ran into her, and she wanted to hang out with me, and we went to, we, so I came by her house to pick her up so we could hang out, and then my cousin over there, this nigga see that shit, and and he don't want her to go out nowhere, so he forced and come along with us, and he just kicked it with us the whole time, and I could just see how irritated my homegirl was, and ball smack, he's such a weenie, what can I do that just, just, just help him see the light, and you know, it's just all bad, ball smack, and then, and then, you know, at the, at the end of the night, he just basically ruined the night for us. We ended up having to go home early because of him. And I know she's going to break his heart, boss, man. Give me some game on what to do. I hope y'all understood that long, drawn-out shit. You know what I'm going to say. You know? A nigga must live with his own weeniness. A nigga must live with his own weeniness. If he is a weenie, he is a weenie. You saying something to him about his weeniness ain't gonna make him do shit, but be like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Let him be destroyed by the bitch. And you still be friends with that bitch because it's not, it's not her fault that he stumbled into her fucking path. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I never try to save a nigga from his weeniness. Even though I'm the motherfucking ball smack top soil on here spitting game, talking and shit and talking like this, man, you best believe I look at niggas every day do weenie shit and I don't volunteer one fucking uh, syllable of advice, motherfucker. You feel me? Unless a motherfucker come to me and be like, help me, nigga! This is my problem! Do you have a solution? If a motherfucker don't do that, I ain't got shit to say about your motherfucking weeniness, nigga. Matter of fact, that shit is amusing to me to watch you do weenie shit and not say shit about it. Nigga. Fuck around and put that shit in a story on the fucking blog, nigga. All right. I should have do another. I, you know, I got a lot of motherfucking reader listener emails, but I'm trying to, I want to condense some shit because, man, I, hey, hey, I'm going to keep it real. We having the year end awards on this motherfucker show, the Boss Magnosis Live Year End Awards. So I got to fit the shit in. I got to fit the shit in. You know what I'm saying? I got to fit the shit all right. I want to get into the motherfucking show topic. I want to get into the motherfucking show topic. Our show topic. You ain't ready for this. Y'all motherfuckers is not ready for this, man. Shout out to the homie Q in Milwaukee. Shout out to the homie Q in Milwaukee, man. All right. Uh, 
the show topic. Coffee and McDonald's. Coffee and motherfucking McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? I know motherfuckers is like, man, what in the fuck is this nigga talking about? What is this nigga always coming up with some bullshit? Nigga, listen here, nigga. Coffee and McDonald's, nigga. If you fuck with the ball smack top soil, if you if you if you seen some of my YouTube videos, you probably seen my one video where where ten things a bitch will do to fuck with your mind. You feel me? And on there, I say the term coffee and McDonald's. And when I say that term, that term is taken directly from a bitch's mouth. A bitch told me that. Nigga, I will wait outside of your house in a car, in a different car that you don't know, with coffee and McDonald's, and wait for you to come home with that bitch and I will beat that motherfucking bitch's ass in the motherfucking street at motherfucking two o'clock in the motherfucking morning, nigga. Coffee and McDonald's, homie. Coffee and McDonald's, homie. Coffee and McDonald's, homie. Y'all niggas don't know nothing about coffee and McDonald's. I'm trying to tell niggas right now, man. Now, Truth be told, truth be told, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down because I'm getting passionate in here. Because y'all motherfuckers don't know about coffee and McDonald's. I'm getting passionate. But I'm going to say, it is a segment of motherfuckers who don't have to worry about coffee and McDonald's. Because ain't no bitch going to be worried about you like that because you such a fucking wing. You feel me? So you ain't got to worry about coffee and McDonald's. This is for them niggas that's really, you know, if you having some bitches out there, if you if you having some bitches, if you fucking with bitches, coffee and McDonald's, nigga. Coffee and McDonald's, nigga. Never underestimate a bitch. Never underestimate a bitch. Do you hear me? And I know, I, you know, I know it's a lot of motherfuckers out there right now, man, who, who talk a lot of shit about the ball smack top. So who don't, who, you know, you, you think I'm tripping. I'm putting too much on it. I'm putting, it's too much hood shit on this shit. But nigga, a motherfucking, a motherfucking elementary teacher be outside of your shit with coffee and McDonald's, nigga, ready to tear some shit up. You feel me? Man, niggas, niggas, niggas ain't, niggas. Let me get into this. Real talk. This is a true motherfucking story, man. This is a true motherfucking story, nigga. I remember one time, man, you know, back in the day, you know, um, you know, hey, Nigga out at the motherfucking shark bar. The shark bar used to be popping. It used to be, it used to be bomb, nigga, on La Cienega, man. Nigga out there, right? So, a nigga have fired a bitch. I, 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 I this is a, a, a bitch that I didn't stop fucking with, right? Okay. Her name is Kim. Kim. I didn't stop fucking with Kim, right? All right. Now, I'm at the shark bar, you know, and I see another bitch, and she with her peoples. Now, this bitch, Stephanie, I'm, she with her peoples, right? Now, she want to leave. I just so happen that we want to leave, too, so I get a bitch a ride home, right? But little, little do I know, Kim 
is outside watching me, right? Because I'm not up on the coffee and the motherfucking McDonald's. You feel me? So, the bitch follows me uh, to the motherfucking house. But, you know, in the, in the process of driving, you know, I, I hit a couple corners and, you know, and, you know, the bitch lost track of me. So, I dropped Stephanie off at home, right? Then I went home. Now, I'm living in a, I'm living in a, some condominiums with a, you know, secured and shit. But you can hit a gate to get in there, right? And it's across the street from this, like, uh, shopping center and it's some businesses to be open late and you know i'll be over there and motherfuckers know me and shit so motherfuckers be you know they can see the front of my building and the gate and shit right one of the motherfuckers over there it's, it's a, it was like a little burger stand over there all right so i go home and then while I'm at, I'm, 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 I'm in the house, and all of a sudden, the motherfucker knocking at my door, which is like some, whoa, the fuck? Motherfucker knocking, how the, what? So I don't even, you know, I don't even answer that shit. I just, you know, go on tip and look out the motherfucking window, man, looking out there and see, you know, little peephole, bitch outside. You know what I'm saying? So I just, man, you know, Big old episode, I, you know, I, you know, I, I put the, I, I put the bitch out. N- neighbors all coming outside. I put the bitch out. But, but, you can't underestimate the coffee in McDonald's. I talked to my peoples at the burger spot. The nigga said the bitch hit the gate. He saw the bitch hit the gate, and he didn't have my number. He would have called me. Never underestimate the coffee and McDonald's, nigga. Coffee and McDonald's. Hey, one more, one more scenario, nigga. One more scenario, nigga. Real spit, nigga. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say this, man. This, I know this happened to a lot of niggas. I know this have happened to a lot of niggas, and I'm not saying nothing new. And, you know, this ain't nothing new. Had a, had a, had a, you know, nice team of bitches, nice staff, you know. And then, you know, like, you always going to end up having to dismiss a bitch. Top bitch started getting shaky. Top bitch started getting shaky, man. I had to let that bitch go, right? And this was when I was a lot younger, man. So, you know, I was real like when the bitch just did something that I thought was just unforgivable. I just death penalty the bitch right there. Bitch, you fired. You know, fuck you. Get the fuck out of my house. You know, just, you know. This real, you know, uh, I, I was full of zeal back then, you know. So, you know, man, bitch was, woo, woo, she was hot, she was hot, and she, you know, she gave me a shot. She was like, you know, look, she was really like, nigga. Don't do this to me, you know. I really, you know, I'm, you know, I'm. I, 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 I bitch is just really, uh, uh. I was just really fucking upset. I'm sorry, baby. Just don't do this to me, please. And it was like a tone in the bitch voice that was like, you know, maybe she get a bitch a second chance. You know, don't, don't, don't be. I'm like, nigga, fuck that. Nah, no, fuck that, bitch. Fuck you. Just ruthless, you know. And man, oh boy. Um, I say, yeah, I made her get the fuck out and then fuck with her for about a couple. I say about, what, about five days later? Fuck my truck up, man. Fuck 
man, about four racks worth of damage, you know. Now, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't prove, you know, that the bitch did it because she did it so well. You understand me? I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, you know, a nigga park his shit right here, go in the house, have a nice sleep, wake up in the morning, and your shit fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So. Coffee and McDonald's, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, dog, look. Now, it's really kind of, I, I know motherfuckers probably like, man, why are you telling me this shit, man? It ain't really nothing you could do to avoid shit. Or, you, you know, this is part of the game and all this and that. I, I'm just really just, you know, a lot of shit is avoidable, you know. Using tack in the way you fire a bitch and, um, you know, uh, 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 having secured parking and shit and parking your shit in a secured place and, you know, um, don't fuck with bitches that live close by you if you don't got to, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's a few things you can do, man. Just, just coffee. And McDonald's, man, you know, when you fire a bitch, be aware of the coffee and McDonald's. When you fire a bitch, be aware of coffee and McDonald's, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I really can't say it no other kind of way, man. I just hope it really touch niggas, man. Um, Another, another, another little anecdote. Another little. Another. How much time we got? Wait, how much time we got, man? Fuck the anecdote, then. Fuck that. The boss magnosis year in awards. Year in awards. Oh man, beautiful, it's fucking beautiful. Yes. Brought to you by Ball Smack Streetwear. Ball Smack Gnosis Year End Awards. Year End Awards. And our awards are as follows. And we added a couple of new awards this year. A couple of new awards. So they were, let me read them off to you. We got our coveted Mac of the Year. Mac. And uh, Weenie of the Year. Weenie of the Year. Sour Bitch of the Year. That's a new one. Sour Bitch of the Year. Sucker Move of the Year. You know, we gotta have that. Sucker Move of the Year. And Strong Words of the Year. Okay? Strong words of the year, so those are the awards up for grabs. So let's get into it, man. It's a beautiful thing. Let's get into it. It's gonna be beautiful. Our first award. Strong words of the year. Now that's a new one. That's a new one. So I want to lead off with that to set the tone of everything we got going here. Strong words of the year. Now, the strong words of the year is a quote from a famous motherfucker or whoever in general. The strong words that everybody has heard and have an effect on people worldwide. So, our nominees are Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. Now, it's, it's a trip to both of them motherfuckers. It's some basketball motherfuckers, ain't it? But anyway, Kobe Bryant's strong words, you know what they are. After game seven, basking in victory as he stepped up onto the 
to the podium for the press conference. Kobe Bryant uttered these famous words. Kobe Bryant, what does this mean to you? It means I have one more ring than Shaq. And you could take that to the bank. Strong words from Kobe Bryant. Take that to the bank. And LeBron James, from the decision, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. Strong words of the year. And our award goes to Kobe Bryant, Bryant. of course, because Kobe Bryant had proved some shit with his strong words because he won fucking his rings. So he automatically wins. Even though taking talents to South Beach may come back to haunt Kobe in June, we shall see. Strong words, Kobe Bryant. Sour Bitch of the Year! Our nominees are... Brandy. Lola Angel. You know with the fake ass, the whole lot of big fake ass Lola Angel. I know she barely deserved to be in this shit because y'all probably don't even know who that bitch is. But I let the bitch be in there because she's such a fucking sour bitch now. But anyway... D-Way's ex-wife, I don't know that bitch's name, and Little Kim, Sour Bitch of the Year, you have it there, our winner, Little Kim, Little Kim, I'm sorry bitch, oh god, it's sad. Nicki Minaj just put a good foot in the ass, boy, I tell you. Woo! Lil' Kim, you should have thought out that diss record you made to Lil' Kim, I mean to uh, Nicki Minaj, you should have thought about that a little harder before you just went in there and just picked that fucking, oh man, that feral mind beat, man. Oh God, you could have did better than that. I feel sorry for you, bitch. And everybody I know heard that shit felt sorry, too. All right. Let's keep it moving. Keep it going. What we got next? Sucker move of the year. Sucker move of the year. Our nominees are Floyd Mayweather for putting hands on his bitch and being cowardly and not fighting uh, Pacquiao. Being cowardly. Coward. Hey, Floyd Mayweather, if you hear me, I'm saying you're a coward. you cow cowardly. Coward. You're a coward. Anyway, Floyd Mayweather. Our other nominee for Sucker Move is T.I. T.I. For voluntarily going back to the penitentiary for no reason, full ignorance, I, 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 you know, this, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, who's the other motherfucker? Oh, yeah, Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert Arenas. Now, you know, Gilbert Arenas shit might have actually helped him because, see, I'm, I'm damn near want to pull him up. You know Gilbert ain't gonna win because Gilbert on Orlando now they looking good. That I, I I said I told niggas I said that before I said if Gilbert is gonna fuck around and be on somebody's squad and he's gonna be to this side he gonna be in he gonna put a team in the hunt for the final. I said that shit. I told niggas that shit. But anyway, Gilbert Arenas. So second move of the year. Ti. We know it's Ti because. Voluntarily going back to the penitentiary is 
man, I, I just busting a U, uh, busting a Yui, blowing Kush. You know, come on, man, come on, man. Damn. I mean, you know, hey, man. When I do illegal shit, when I'm driving around blowing Kush in my truck, when I, I and I love doing that shit. Man, I'm obeying all the fucking rules of the road, man. That's at least, that's the least, I can at least do that. You know what I'm saying? When I'm blowing Kush and driving, when I'm driving around, I'm obeying all the rules of the road. Hey, man, I drive the speed limit. You know what I'm saying? I stop at the stop sign. Okay, I can't bust you right there. Gotta, you know, and I'm blowing big cushion this motherfucker though. Anyway, T.I. Sucker Move of the Year, voluntary, going to back to the penitentiary. Not, not gangster. Okay, um, strong words. Oh, weenie. Of the, of the year, weenie of the year, nominees are LeBron James, LeBron James, and I bet y'all like how what how you deserve to be weenie of the year, man? What are you hating on LeBron? Man, listen here, man. I don't give a fuck. LeBron, I remember you quitting in them playoff games against the Celtics, nigga. In the finals, nigga, you quit. That's some weenie bitch ass shit. I don't give a fuck. If Delonte West was massaging your mama's tonsils with his dick. So what? Nigga. Go out there and go to war with the motherfucking Celtics. That was some weenie shit. Fuck that. He up for weenie of the goddamn year. Our other nominee. Brandon motherfucking Brandon Jennings. Jennings. Brandon Jennings weenie of the year nominee. Why? Hey, man. I don't give a fuck. That video that lady gaga video shit he did with some bullshit that's some gay shit now i ain't got nothing against gay people but man what the fuck you know what i'm saying that's okay i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna make some statements about brandon jennings right now brandon jennings ain't from compton he is not a compton nigga you know what I'm saying? He got recruited to Dominguez High School because Dominguez High School is on some shit where they recruit motherfuckers from wherever because they good and just get them to come there and, and play there and they don't really be from Compton, nigga. Motherfucker, Brandon Jennings ain't from Compton, nigga. Stop claiming Compton, nigga. You making us look bad out here. Nigga, I was just in Milwaukee, and the homie about to open up a motherfucking barbershop. And I was like, you know what, man? I might be able to pull some strings and get Brandon Jennings to come in here and get his hair cut. And I felt funny even saying that shit to this nigga. And the nigga looked at me and was like, Brandon Jennings? Come and get cut? What? What? You mean that nigga to be wearing them mohawks and shit, man? Ain't old boy gay and shit? Ah, oh, man, I don't know if I want him in my shop. I mean, nigga didn't even want him in his hot, in his shop to get his hair cut, man. Brandon Jennings, stop claiming Compton, nigga. You ain't a Compton. Anyway, man, Brandon Jennings up for motherfucking Winnie of the Year, man. That bullshit. Winner, man. You know what? You know what? Woo! This is tough. This is kind of tough. This is kind of tough. LeBron James is winning the goddamn year. Fuck that. Because, man, that, that was some punk shit, man. This is the heat of battle. This is what you supposed to do. 
You supposed to, this is what you do, play basketball and heat it, heat a battle. This nigga scored seven points in one of them games. Mad at Delonte What Man, fuck that shit, man. Le- LeBron James, we ain't the motherfucking year. Brandon Jennings, you ain't from Compton, nigga. Brandon right. right. Jennings, you ain't from Compton. Our coveted Mac of the Year. Mac of the Year. Ah, it's a beautiful thing. Just to even be able to give this award. And we have some, we have some truly, truly wonderful nominees. Our, our first nominee, Cat Stacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cat Stacks, you know what she has done? She has humiliated many motherfuckers on her way up to famous statuses. She's over there with over 200,000 followers on Twitter as a bitch with absolutely no talent, but fucking. She has uh, put many niggas on blast with real talk, and I have yet to see a nigga humiliate her back. The bitch is doing all right to me. Cat motherfucking stacks. Yeah, up for Mac of the Year, old motherfuckers. I know motherfuckers probably real hot I'm doing that, but I'm doing that. Our other nominee, the beautiful Alicia Keys for stealing Swiss beats from Mashonda. For stealing Swiss beats from Mashonda. And I forgot to uh, mention Mashonda as a motherfucking sour bitch candidate because she was a sour bitch nominee, Mashonda. But anyway, the beautiful Alicia Keys. Still in Swiss beats, getting pregnant and married, and having a son for that nigga. Ugh. Alicia Keys. Yeah. Our other nominee for Mac of the Year, the beautiful Hoops. Hoops. Ha- Hoops, who is scheduled to get married to Big Shaq. Hey. You have to give it up to Hoops because the Hoops humiliated Flavor Flav on Flavor Love after winning. Did get that nigga no pussy, called him ugly and thirsty, and was able to uh, go from a few niggas to a few niggas to a few niggas. I think she probably was fucking T.I. The bitch has been waving and floating around, able to get up on Shaq, about to marry Shaq. Gotta get a bitch some love for that. I only hope that she got Shaq back and doesn't break him down like Shawnee did. Hoops. Hoops. Our other nominee for Mac of the Year, Elin Woods, of course, for coming up on millions of motherfucking dollars. Millions and millions of motherfucking dollars. And... Our winner, Alicia motherfucking Keys, nigga. Alicia Keys. Hey, you know what? I know y'all shocked by that. Y'all shocked? Hey, I was going to say uh, Cat Stacks. I was. I was. You know why I didn't? Because, man, I I haven't been seeing Cat Stacks out there grinding. I ain't been hearing about her grinding after she had this fame, doing some shows, getting money. I ain't been hearing about that. So, our winner was Alicia Keys, Mac of the motherfucking year, boss, Mac, no sense, live, nigga. Yeah. Man. What can I say? It's shocking. It's shocking. I know. Niggas, you probably don't agree with that. Think about it. Let it marinate in. This is about achievement. You know? Anyway. Let's go into this final segment. Taking calls from motherfuckers. Taking calls from motherfuckers. Let's go to the phone line. Live on the line, I got a caller from Los Angeles, California. The beautiful car. 
is on the line with the ball smack top soil. What's up with you, car? What's up? What's going on, baby? I'm living and learning, trying to hold it together and be fabulous like you, baby. I'm trying to be like you. That's what I'm trying That's to do. That's right. I'm on the line with the ball smack top soil. Okay, baby. Well, what? I appreciate you calling in tonight. What you got going on tonight? I know you're out and about doing something real uh, spectacular and whatnot. Yeah, well, you know, I just wanted to call in and give you some love, give you some love, you know, like I always do. So what we talking about tonight? I'm going to talk to you Well, you know, this particular show we gave out, I covered it. Uh, some of our coveted awards, our, our, our Mac of the Year Award, our Sour Bitch of the Year Award, our Sucker Moon of the Year Award, and stuff like that. You, you wouldn't be interested, interested in any of those things, would you? I think we hit the back of the show. I can't really hear you so well. See? You didn't hear me. That, that meant we wasn't supposed to talk about that. Car. Okay, that's better. That's better. <laughs> okay, listen to me, baby. Um, what's that? What's that? What's what, what, what you got going on tonight, though? What you doing? I'm doing my woman tonight. I'm out about. I'm not killing tonight. You know, I murdered him a couple of nights ago, so I'm going to Okay, well, so what did you doing? Having a glass of Merlot or something at the house or something? What you doing? Can you hear me, baby? Oh, what's going on? Wait, wait, can you hear me? Oh, man, you, you, you're just skipping over my question. You're just skipping over what I had to say, huh? Okay. You just... Oh, man, my New Year's resolution is to be uh, very successful this particular year. I, I'm very focused on being successful. You know what I mean, man? Um, whatever that entails, successful. Okay. Yeah. What about you, baby? You know, um, I'm, there's a lot of things I got going on. So I'm just going to finish one thing. I'm so posted on all that shit so I could give you some oh, love. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, man, you know, I appreciate you calling in, baby girl, because, you know, we got to take some more of these calls. But I appreciate you calling, man. Uh, yeah, I want to do some love talk. You know, I got mad love for you from Top Notch Top Soul, baby. Anytime. Hey, do you be wearing that shirt I sent you? Because, you know, I... Of course I walk in the fucking shirt. You give me me Okay. Of I'm gonna shoot you a couple of with me watching the shirt though, me and my All right, baby. You know we only get hot in them time. You know that already. All right, baby. I appreciate it, man. Much love. Much love. Uh, all right. Okay. Live on the line, we got my peoples from Michigan calling in. Can't steal. What's up with you, people? Hey, man. Hey, man. It's good to talk to you, Boss Mac. You know, a long time listener, first time caller, and everything like that. You know, uh, calling all the way from uh, the Eastern Time Zone and everything like that. So, hey. <laughs> man, it's still late over here, man. Hey. Oh, man. I'm already knowing, man. We just. We just opened up the lines like, fuck it. We just like, fuck it. We just taking calls, man. But, hey, I appreciate you calling oh, yeah. in, man. And you, hey, how, what's the what's the temperature up there right now? What What's the temperature? You know what's funny? You know what's funny? It's actually pretty warm. You know, um, I saw a Facebook update. I don't know what the exact temperature is. But they said that um, it was like 48 degrees. I'm like, I'm like, uh, butt naked. Oh, yeah, man. Wave and shit, man. So that's a 
imaginary rooftop gone. Steroids flow. I'm strong. These niggas ain't plugged in, but I'm on. And I be juking on them. I got a knot, ho. I can make it rain, but I'm not, though. I get the street stitches. I got the block sold. Presidential suite. I'm at the top flow. I rip the meal where they bang it, boy. Blue fur on them. Hank McCoy. Niggas August. Fall back. A Dre at your head like a starter cap. I'm C3. Low key. The whip drives. No key. Niggas hatin', say I'm so sweet. His bitch licking on me, say I'm so sweet. Pillsbury <laughs> hustlers, we about dough. About money, about cars, about clothes. From the gangsters to the riders to the hoes. If they ain't on their job, block in and let them know, tell them. You gotta pay for that. Hey, where your paper at? You gotta pay for that. Hey, where that paper at? You gotta pay for that. Where that, where that paper at? Hey, where that paper at? Where that, where that paper at? I'm in the cut like Ben Days, rubber band banks, I'm paid. I'm picture perfect, Kodak, chiropractic team, we bad. And I be juking on them, hey, where your paper at? You wanna ask me something? You gotta pay for that. Phone book wallet, I let the paper stack, then recycle it, I make the paper back. No Republican, my demo, crack. No garbage, your demo, crap. You pound water, no flow. A bar special, my flow slow. Short yellow bus, like retarded people. Call the corner, cause A bar is lethal. Niggas hatin' cause my top off. His bitch chillin' with me in a top off. Pillsbury hustlers, we about dough. About money, about cars, about clothes. From the gangsters to the riders to the hoes. If they ain't on their job, block in and let them know, tell them. You gotta pay for that, and hey, where your paper at? You gotta pay for that, and hey, where that paper at? You gotta pay for that, where that, where that paper at? And hey, where that paper at? Where that, where that paper at? And Mike Check, hoes on deck, Pillsbury Hustlers, yo boy fresh, airline whips, rolled on jets, whip game six, so I'm throwing up sets. And I be juking on them, oh yeah, I'm on the dial. They know the loot is on them, so I'ma buy the ball. Solar system, you just a star. Your engine ain't in the trunk, then it's just a car. I'm quick draw, like sketch pad. And I play with Nina, tech, can't get it. You dudes fake, thick, shit. Better catch your balance, cause you slip, spin. And I'm bump, like I'm plugged up. Bumblebee rapping to get your buzz up. Niggas hating like fuck, fuck J. His bitch staring at me. I fuck, fuck J. Pillsbury <laughs> hustlers, we about dough. About money, about cars, about clothes. From the gangsters to the riders to the hoes. If they ain't on their job, block in and let them know, tell them. You gotta pay for that. Hey, where your paper at? You gotta pay for that. Hey, where that paper at? You gotta pay for that. Where that, where that paper at? Hey, where that paper at? Where that, where that paper at?